Welcome to Robust TCP Programming, where we're going to create efficient and secure network programs. In this section, we're going to introduce an example server that uses TCP, along with a custom text-based application protocol, which we will improve with each successive video to make the server more robust. One of the first improvements we will use is Go's streaming I.O. API with TCP. Next, we will improve on the server's protocol using a data encoding and serialization protocol to exchange rich data constructs between server and client. Then we will discuss error handling and see how to configure client and server connections. And lastly, we will discuss how to create secure communication between server and clients using TLS. Creating a simple TCP server program with a custom application protocol. To get started in this section, we're going to look at the creation of a simple currency lookup service that uses TCP to return currency information to its clients. We're also going to explore the custom text-based application protocol that the server uses to send data to its clients. Now let us take a look at the currency server. The server introduced in this video implements a simple currency lookup service that can work over TCP or even Unix data sockets using the techniques covered in the previous section. Program loads ISO 4217 currency information and allows clients to query the data using a simple text-based application protocol. And now let's take a look at the protocol. As illustrated on the slide, the first iteration of the server program uses a simple text-based application protocol to exchange data with its clients. The client sends a text command, for instance, get dollar, and the server returns a pre-formatted list of countries that uses currencies with dollar in their name. Having such a simple protocol means that any client program that can send text command to the server can receive the data as well. Now, let us take a look at the code that implements such a server. As we've been saying, the server in this example implements a simple text-based protocol that can be used either using TCP or even Unix data gram sock. Before we start exploring the program, let us take a look at this Go library that is used throughout the program to retrieve currency data. So this will help us get context so we can understand what's going on. And the currency library contains file curlib.go, which defines the currency type. We use the currency type to represent currency information. And it also defines function load, which we use to load data from a comma separated value file, which is data.csv, which contains ISO currency information. Going back to the main server program, we see that we use the currency library to load the currency data file and add it just for simplicity's sake, we just save it in a variable that contain a slice of the currency type that we saw earlier. Now that we know about the currency library, let us continue and explore the server itself. One of the first thing we do, as we've done in past videos, is to set up flags that we will use to specify one the address the listening address for the server and the second flag is used to specify the network protocol once we do that we come down here and set up a switch block to validate the supported network protocol either tcp tcp4 tcp6 or unix next using the address and the protocol we set up our listener by calling net.listen to, so we can get a listener value. And once we have that, we jump into our connection loop using the listener. So we use the listener as we've done before, listen.accept, which will block until a connection arrives from the client. Following the same pattern as we've done before, once we have a connection, we use a separate Go routine to handle that connection using Go handle connection. Inside the handle connection function, we basically do the same thing we've done before. The first thing we do is to set up a defer function that'll close the connection whenever handle connection exits. Next, we use type con write method to send a message to the client. Basically, it's a usage message that tells the client how to use the server. Next, we set up an interaction loop, basically to keep the connection between the client and the server. As long as the client is sending data, we'll loop back here, grab the data, and send a response to the client. 
The first thing we do inside the interaction loop is to set up a 4K buffer, which we will use to read incoming requests from the client. If everything works out OK, we continue. And whatever value we grabbed here in the command line buffer, we call function parse command to parse the command. Now, this is a very simple command. It's either going to be get followed by the string or the currency string that we're looking for. So this is what the parse command is doing. It's going to return the command. And this simple example is just going to always be get. And then whatever currency string that we're looking for. So when parse command returns, we will get the command and the parameter that we're looking for. So that parameter could be the name of a currency or the currency ID or the name of a country, etc. So we take that command, we test to see if it's get. Again, it's always going to be get because we don't support anything else. But if it's something else, we'll just say, hey, it's an invalid command. So once we do a get command, we actually get a get command. We called the on using the library, the currency library called the find method that we talked about earlier, passing it the currency is where it's going to look for that parameter that was passed in. If the find methods find no result, we send a message back to the client saying nothing was found. And then we continue back at the top of interaction loop and go and wait for the next command. If in fact we find some result for the currency, we use the FEMPT package to print a formatted result back to the client. So here we use the connection that write method and inside of that as a parameter, we pass it a, a formatted string containing the currency name, currency code, currency number and currency country. And basically that is it. So next we're going to see how to use that server. OK, now let's go ahead and run the server program. As we've done before, we're going to use go run and then pass it server file name. So it's server txt zero and to start it. The first thing the server does is to jump into the connection loop. It uses listener dot accept to wait for the first connection to come in. As we see, the server reports back that it is listening on port. It's listening using TCP IP and on port 4040 because we didn't pass any additional flags to change those values. So it defaults to TCP and localhost 4040. Because our server is using a text-based application level protocol, to test it, we don't need necessarily to write a client program at this time. What we could use is any tools that we have available that can send text and receive text from the server. And as we've done before, we're going to use Netcat to do that for us. So now let's go ahead and start Netcat and we're going to use TCP and localhost 4040 to connect to the server. The first thing we get is a instruction on how to use the client. And if you remember in the code, that is the first string that the server sends the client after we connect. Now at this point, we've entered the request response loop that we saw in the code. So I can type a request and it'll get sent to the server and I should be able to get a response back. So let's go ahead and do that. The first currency we're going to look at is uh, USD for US dollar. So let's see what we get back. As expected, we get a list of currencies that use uh, US dollar where we find US dollar in the name. Let's do another one. Let's do get good. This is the Haitian currency. And indeed, we see that we get Haiti as a response back. If we do one more, get euro and we see that we get pretty much all currencies that are used that uh, contain euro and before we stop let's see how the server behaves if we search for something that is not there so let's get foo as expected the server returns the string nothing found if you remember that was one of the cases that we talked about in the code what about if the command is not good so let's see if we put foo bar and as expected, the server returned invalid command. So in this video, we started with a server that uses a simple text-based protocol to exchange world currency information with its clients.